How does the smell of lilacs get into a can of air freshener? How does the taste of a strawberry get into a piece of candy? For 100 years, the people of Bell Flavors and Fragrances have been making this magic happen, creating flavors that wet the world's palate, generating fragrances that bring the outdoors in, and producing botanical extracts and ingredients that enhance the products people the world over rely on for their everyday needs. But it wasn't always that way. Bell was founded in 1912 by William M. Bell. He was working at Kraft Foods as a flavor scientist in their confectionery department and decided to start his own flavor company. He was a very creative person and developed flavors in the confectionery industry and the dairy industry. Bell also led the way in creating innovative tastes in items such as caramels and marshmallows. After William Bell's death in the late 1930s, the business was sold to Theonet & Company, another flavor industry player that shared the same building with Bell. Theonet continued Bell's operations for three decades. Then, in 1967, a chemist by the name of Edward Hines Jr. purchased the William M. Bell Company. Grandpa had been in that business forever, and uh, he worked for a company called Food Materials. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when we were able to buy a company and go in business for ourselves, that's exactly what he did. And I said, if there's a company available, I have a little money, I'll help you. Well, he said, where'd you get it? And I said, well, if you knew, I wouldn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Backed by his 25 years of flavoring experience, Edward Hines set out to make Bell a global leader in the flavoring industry. During the next decade, Edward's goal did start coming to fruition, not only in terms of market share, but in the number and types of foods Bell was flavoring. In the mid-1970s, Edward smelled a new growth opportunity for Bell, the fragrance industry. And in 1976, he purchased Maumee Flavors and Fragrances, a division of the Sherwin-Williams Company. This was soon followed by acquisitions of Rubichet, a candle fragrance manufacturer, and the Step and Chemical Company's flavor division. The industry was much more fragmented during those days, and uh, the smaller companies, even Steppen, uh, kind of focused and specialized in certain areas. So with each acquisition came another specialty. Then in 1983, Edward made one of the biggest buyouts in Bell's history when he purchased Sinfluor. The company grew quickly with his dual focus, and the prosperity soon warranted a new name. So in the early 1980s, the company was renamed Bell Flavors and Fragrances to better reflect the true nature of the business. 1987 brought about the end of an era for the company when Edward Hines passed away. The company's leadership was passed on to his three sons. Jim, Raymond, and Reb continued their father's passion for the business, resulting in even greater expansion and growth. We went to Germany in 1990 after German reunification between the East and West Germany, and we went to the government organization called the Treuhandenstalt in Berlin. We asked them if they had any flavor of fragrance companies that they were trying to privatize on the eastern side. And finally, we got to Miltitz, and we knew that. You could smell the air, and you knew it was a flavor and fragrance company. And it actually was the, the mother firm, the first flavor and fragrance company in the world. Having originally been built to serve the entire eastern Bloc for all of its flavor and fragrance needs, the equipment was just pristine. It was large. It, Everything it produced was in boxcar, train, rail car size. They developed there most of the techniques that are still used in the flavor and fragrance industry, like distillation, important people that work there, like Dr. Otto Wallach, who was a Nobel Prize winner in 1910 for chemistry. This facility is also home to the Schimmel Library, the oldest chemical library in the world 
It has collections of some of the earliest and most pioneering work to ever be developed and studied in this industry. With more than 40 R&D professionals, 20 of whom hold doctorates, Schimmel's and now Bell's tradition of innovation and research continues to create award-winning products throughout the world. My father started out and we were a domestic corporation. My brothers had a vision and their vision catapulted us into the global markets. Bell grew in 1998 with the um, additional 40,000 square foot we put onto the, the square feet we put onto the Northbrook facility. Um, we've had acquisitions in Canada, so the Broussard locations come aboard. We've had acquisitions in Shanghai, and we started the Shanghai facility in Guadalajara, and now Brazil. In addition to that, we just completed an 85,000 square foot addition to the Northbrook facility, essentially you know, doubling the size. Bell Canada is known for its great service. It's also known for excellent products and most of all the teamwork. You know, there's an excellent team here in Canada and I think that if we continue to offer that service, to offer those quality products and to have people work as a team, there's no doubt that Bell will be successful in the future. We were one of the first companies to be able to incorporate and not having a 50% joint venture with a Chinese company. So it's 100% wholly owned subsidiary of Bell, U.S. We are the only foreign company in China that has a tobacco license, which means we, can, we are the only foreign company that can deal directly with the monopoly. All of the others, whether it's IFF, Jividan, Fairman, it, it doesn't matter. They have to go through a broker that has a license that was given to them by Beijing. IGSA was a 50-year-old uh, flavor and fragrance company in Guadalajara, Mexico. They were a very old company, they had good products. We bought a building next to their facility. We've uh, expanded in many different areas in that uh, facility where this coming year we're going to expand with new research and development laboratories in that facility. So there's quite a bit of, of uh, progress. We're very excited about Brazil, which is one of the BRIC countries as we know. It's one of the fastest growing economies in the world and their, their flavor and fragrance needs are growing as well. Especially again as you grow, you need to have better systems, you need to have more people, you need to have more sophisticated people, and Bell really has, has found that. It, it's a great place to work, uh, which is evidenced by the fact people come here and they stay. We have very few product rejections. Our customers know and trust us. They know that when they place an order for a product that it's going to be the same quality every time, that they don't have to worry about how their end product is going to produce and get out to the marketplace. As any good business analyst will tell you, a company's future is only as good as its people. And fortunately for Bell, its next 100 years look really great. From simple beginnings 100 years ago, selling his confectionery flavorings to ice cream parlors, grocery stores, and soda pop shops, could William Bell ever have envisioned his company becoming what it is today? Today, Bell Flavors and Fragrances has grown into a global multi-million dollar company that develops creative flavors and fragrances for the food, beverage, cosmetic, household care, personal care, oral care, and tobacco companies throughout the world. But there is definitely one aspect of the company William Bell and even his successor Edward Hines would recognize. The values these visionary leaders created are still being carried on by the Hines and Bell families today. And that is something that will never change.